Okay. So, just very shortly, um, the amusement of actually doing um, doing lives and doing it on Instagram for the first time. There is a video of basically the introduction of Domaine de Meteor. We've spoken about the um, the wine you guys produced, mm -hmm. the Fougère Appellation, and we've also been waxing lyrical about their pop-up restaurant that is going to start on the 12th of 12th June. Of June. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. is next weekend. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what we were saying is it's absolutely incredible. It's in the meteor crater, mm -hmm. which is the reason why the um, domain is called Domain de Meteor. Yes. Um, they don't seat much more than 16 people, so get in there fast. It's a six-course mm -hmm. pairing menu. Yes, that's right. All cooked outdoors, mm -hmm. on fire, in smokers. Yeah. Um, so it really is a truly unique experience. Um, I went last year and I, I can honestly say I think it was the best meal I've ever eaten in France. Wow, that's a no, compliment. Seriously, it, it is Michelin star quality food. It really is. So yeah. if you haven't been, you're missing out. It's, it's a, a must have. And we really appreciate your comments. Um, especially when you put them on social media, it really helps yeah. people to know that we exist and that's really helped our bookings last year so you know and guys again i think you know we it's really important at the moment to share these businesses mm -hmm. we're all small businesses we're trying to make a go of it and mm -hmm. um, so sh share and go onto things like TripAdvisor, give people reviews give people reviews on facebook big it up on instagram it's really really yeah. important take for take nice us. photos on instagram exactly yeah. mm -hmm. millie We've got a spaniel in the kitchen, and she's not meant to be in the kitchen. Come on, Moo, you've got to go lie in the lounge. Come on, you're not meant to be in the kitchen, you know that. She's not listening to me. You know the problem is you can smell food. Yeah. But what we are going to, the reason we're here as well tonight is actually to do a tasting. So I've been cooking this afternoon. There will be, um, I've actually been recording it, and I'll be posting it on YouTube, and I'll post the link on Facebook and Insta in the next um, couple of days once it's been edited and we've been making a bracciola mm. so a bracciola is rolled beef yeah. and which is okay hi i'm monica from the courtyard kitchen and today we are going to be making a um, italian dish from southern italy called a bracciola it's basically little rolls of beef which you roll around the stuffing and um, which are cooked in a red wine and tomato sauce. So I'm going to get started. I've pre-prepped most of it so that you don't all have to sit there through my banging and crashing. But I'm going to show you how I flatten off one of the things. So you, for this you can either use beef or you can use rum steak. I mean, you can use rum steak or you can use pork escalops or veal escalops. I'm actually using a mixture today, so mainly beef, and I've got a couple of veal escalops as well that I'm going to be doing. Um, so this one is a veal escalop, which is, as you can see, not terribly thick, probably about, I don't know, just over half a centimeter. And I'm just going to, with a meat tenderizer, And we are going to mix our stuffing together. Now the stuffing is really, really simple. It's, I've done a mixture of pecorino and um, Parmesan cheese. You can just use Parmesan if you can't get hold of pecorino or if you prefer just to use pecorino, you're welcome to. Pecorino tends to be a little saltier than Parmesan cheese, but again, it's a nice hard cheese. So something like cheddar, something which is a really, really gooey cheese is not gonna work particularly well for this. So if you can't find Parmesan cheese, um, Gran Padano is another one that you can use. Um, try and find the driest possible cheese that you can use. So my cheese is all gonna go in there. I've got a couple of tablespoons of dried bread crumbs that are gonna go in as well. I've crushed these were two very large garlic cloves. Um, if you don't have the big jumbo garlic cloves, I would advise you to use double the amount, so use four. There we go. And 
it should have pine nuts in it. Unfortunately, because of lockdown, um, some of our supplies in the supermarket are a little bit, um, I don't know, a little bit more difficult to get hold of. So I wasn't able to get hold of pine nuts, but I did get hold of sort of crushed almonds. So I've decided to use some crushed almonds instead. That's about 50 grams of crushed almonds. And then a good, generous handful of parsley. Some of this parsley I'm going to use afterwards when the dish has been done, so I'll keep that to the side. And now we literally just want to mix all of this together. So my escalop, I'm going to start with my veal escalop that I just um, flattened off. My toothpicks. And we're going to put some stuffing in here. Okay. It's just starting to rain outside. <laughs> so the reason, I mean, it's my husband Simon does um, live um, Facebook um, tutorials um, for watercolors and we're kind of following each other during lockdown. We're doing kind of a virtual painting and cooking holiday and we're follow following each other around the Mediterranean. So this week's, his has been based on the Amalfi Coast, a scene off the Amalfi Coast in Ravello. Um, so I was looking for something that would go well with that. And then after this, I've actually got a person from a local Demen coming on. And okay, we're just going to secure this with a couple of toothpicks. You can also use butcher's um, twine if you want to. So it really, it's up to you but the toothpicks are nice and easy. Okay, and we will just put that to the side for cooking just now. And in the meantime, I'm not going to take you through the whole tedious process. I am going to do the rest of these. So the best way to do this is seam side down so that you seal the seam into the hot oil. are going to make up the sauce. So the first thing, I'm just going to turn this temperature down slightly, is we want to just brown off the garlic slightly. Some of this I'm leaving because I'm going to serve this with actually a wilted um, rocket, which I'm going to use garlic in as well a little bit later. And just cook that garlic up slightly. Just want to get it to the point where you can start sort of smelling the aroma, but be careful not to burn it. And we are then going to add. About, if you're doing the full recipe, about half a litre of um, beef stock. I'm doing it a little bit less, so. And you can use that to just get off all the brown, brown bits on the bottom of the pan as well. I'm going to use the, a can of plum tomatoes. You can get hold of um, a Mediterranean or a at least 
or an Italian variety, that's good because you know that the tomatoes have been grown in a warm climate, so they'll be a lot sweeter. Now, I tend to use canned tomatoes a lot. Um, in the summer, when I have my own fresh tomatoes, I'll either use fresh or um, I'll use fresh or I will um, make passata at the end of the summer. But I don't have any fresh tomatoes yet. And you want your tomatoes to be, you, you really don't want those sort of slightly tasteless round tomatoes that you buy at supermarkets. So often the, the canned variety is actually better to use. And we are going to add some red wine. About, again, it's about half a litre, but I'm going to add a little bit less than that. And then a mix of, I'm doing a mix of basil. If you've got Italian herbs, mixed Italian herbs, you can use those. I'm just going to put a, a smattering of basil and then I'm going to add some oregano as well. Oh, I love the smell. Here's some dried herbs that just keep their aroma really well. Now basil, if you're going to use fresh basil, I would actually only tear the basil in right at the end. Basil is one of those ones that dried basil works really well if you put it in early um, because it, the, the, the flavor is actually a lot stronger dried than it is fresh. But I find the um, that flavor of fresh basil needs to be sort of needs to be torn in right towards the end. Okay. Now that is going to slowly cook down, and we're going to put this in for about an hour and a half. So that meat goes back in. So nice. Now you can do it in the oven at about 150. Otherwise, on the stove top, over a very low, medium, a medium low heat. We're going to get that to just bubble away, and then I am going to close the lid. Here we go. So it's, it's like it sat in the kitchen. You get to taste it. Oh, <laughs> Let's pour you a little glass of wine as well. I think you deserve it after the day you've had. So you guys have been bottling today, haven't you? Yeah. So in top by seven this morning, we've been bottling. How many um, bottles did you do today? Do you have any uh, idea? Around 7,000. Okay. Um, so we're a little team. I think there was about seven of us. Yeah. So everyone has a different job to do. So we actually have our own bottling machine. And they oh, do, do you? Things. Okay. Yeah. So you don't have a bottling truck that comes along? Sometimes we do. Okay. Um, but we've got our own machine operational right. today so okay. it's good to be able to use our own machine no it is mm. yeah now i can imagine because um for people who again something i didn't know until i moved here is a lot of wineries are not actually big enough to to have their own um, mm -hmm. bottling machines and yeah. they actually have a truck that comes along and yeah. literally this truck is a is a bottling unit it's mm -hmm. got all of the, mach the machinery it's a little conveyor belt yeah and um, which i assume is more or less how your system works yeah. as well very similar, yeah. You know, and there are literally, you have people packing the bottles onto the conveyor belt yeah. and they get stacked up and then it sort of goes through a process where the first thing is it cleans the bottle, doesn't it? Or the bottle's clean. I can't remember if they the get clean The bottles are already it. sterile. They're already sterile. Sorry. Okay, so they arrive right sterile. Yeah. And then, will you talk through it? So, and then, yeah, it goes through the, the machine, the wine goes in, it goes, the bottle gets lifted up, the wine goes in yeah. and then it turns around and then I can't, I'm not really good at explaining this but when the cork goes in they also add a gas to get rid of the, the oxygen so okay. the wine stays fresh Yeah. and then it goes on to the next part where the capsule is put on yeah. and sealed and then the the label. Yeah and then it sort of whizzes through yeah. this thing that it spins whips around and whips the, the label, label on and the yeah. label then it goes to the end and then the person who's packing the boxes takes the bottles, put them in the box push it through where the sellotape yeah. machine sellotapes it up and, and then someone down. puts it onto a pallet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, if you ever want, I've done it, where if you're ever one of the people that are actually putting the bottles on, sometimes if you're not quite fast enough, those bottles just keep coming. <laughs> Nothing yeah. stops you sitting there just going absolutely mad. Yeah. But it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. So, a little bit more Same. about, oh, here's your cutlery as well, that might help. 
so you can right. I see what you mean that there's a little bit of spiciness in mm -hmm. there, isn't there? Yeah, it's this is our um, medium range red wine. Right, okay. So it's called Placide, which is named after a meteor shower which happens in August Large every year. All of our cuvées, except for uh, club, uh, apart from Parangon, the Saint yes. Union, they're named after meteor showers. Okay. So our entry level wines are called Leonid. Yes. And so we have this cuvée in red, white, and rosé. Okay. Yes. And it was the red Leonid that we bottled today, and we sell. That's our biggest seller. Okay. Um, also, a couple of weeks ago, we bottled the white and the rosé. So all three colours are now available. Then we have the Carigny, which is the 100% Carignan okay, in all yeah. vines. Then we have this one, Percy. Um, so. And that one's just a red? Yeah, this one is yeah. just in red. And again, so it's one third Syrah, one third Grenache, one third Mourvedre, one year in all the bottles. Yeah, and this is from the vintage 2016. Right, it's got okay. A bit of age now. And okay. The tannins are nice and soft, but. It's got a really good body. Yeah, it has. Um, it's quite chocolatey, spicy. Yes, it's one often gets that sort of hint of cocoa in yeah. um, in red wine, doesn't one? Yeah, especially from syrup. Um, tell me what you think when you taste. Oh, it's lovely. It's very really lovely. Easy to drink. It is. Drink. It's very smooth. Uh -huh. Very smooth. And I see what you mean. It's not got a lot of tannin at all. So yeah. if a wine's got a lot of tannin, it kind of almost makes your teeth slightly sticky. Yeah. It's, a, it's quite a weird sensation. Uh -huh. But this is, is a little bit of tannin at the beginning, yeah. but it disappears after it's a few seconds. Really well um, balanced. Yeah. So you've got the balanced. Uh, it's got balance nice fruit in it as well. You mm -hmm. know, there's a nice. Yeah. But it's not overpowering. Some of the Fougere wines can be incredibly fruity, mm -hmm. and this one is, like you said, very well balanced. Yeah, there are notes that are not just fruit, like the spicy side, yeah. and maybe a little bit leathery as well, in, in taste, not in texture. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a great fruit wine. It is. Talking of food. <laughs> Did we feed our dog? Yeah. So, let me taste this, I can't wait. You might leave a few little toothpicks in it, so just be careful when you when you have a taste. And don't worry too much about having massive mouthfuls. Okay. My, I, after bottling, I try to clean my nails, but I'm sorry if you notice. Oh, it's always impossible, isn't it? <laughs> it's not as bad as if you help with harvest, though, because then you just don't get rid of that purple ever. No. Oh, that's so nice. So it's got a little bit of prosciutto in it as well. Mm. So there's a little bit of that um, smoked, um, which again with the oakiness, I think will it will marry marry that slight oak of the um, of the wine really. Yes, well. I think it's it's a really good match, and I love this sauce. Yeah, it's really smoky tomato mm. flavor, and the, the cheese as well. Yeah, there's and there's a little bit of I put a little bit of cheese in the um, in the pimento as well. Mm. I love the texture of pimento. It is. It's, it's like nothing else. No, because it's mm. slightly gritty, but it's mm. not. It's not like a couscous, is it? It's kind of almost like a savoury porridge. <laughs> yeah. In some ways. Let's try this rocket. Hmm. Okay, now I know what I'm going to do with Rocket because sometimes it's boring to have it the same way. I know, I, I often find we, it grows so quickly in our garden and it's, um, I've just never ever thought of cooking it before, it's but so it works nice. really, really well. So guys, I think at this point we are going to end the evening and thank you for joining us. Um, I will also be editing, we'll be editing this up onto the YouTube video, which okay, we have good. done of the food. So it'll top and tail okay. that as well. Fabulous. Okay. So thank you, Corinne. Thank you for having Cheers. me. Cheers. Thanks so much for joining me, especially after such a long day. Oh, um, it's I know a pleasure. That it's, um, I know bottling is, it's, it's a long physical day. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice end to the day. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>
Cheers, guys. Okay, fine. All right. That is so kind of you. I was going to ask you whether I could have asked.